Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Rebecca Gardner. And I know that I posted a video yesterday, but um, I forgot to tell you this yesterday. Um, I decided to, to do a series um, where I kind of start a book club with you guys. And... Um, so basically, this whole series is a read-along series to the books that I love, or maybe to the books that you love. And, um, and, uh, this might be the first season of this series, so, um, if you guys like it, then maybe I'll do a season two. But, um, yeah, anyways, um, welcome to the first episode of Read Along With Me, and, um, actually, before I start this episode, um, I want to kind of show you guys, um, something. Hey, puppy. Want to say hi to the world? This is my new puppy. We got her like three weeks ago. Um, her name is Princess Zoe. She's so adorable. <laughs> and she's a couple months old. <laughs> and she... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she likes to play and she can be a little feisty, but we love her anyways. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> anyways, um, all right. Now you met those people. Oh, wait, do you want to say hi? Yo, whoa. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, she's really adorable. <laughs> okay. Go back to eating your box. <laughs> okay, um. So anyways, um, I decided to do this series, um, where I just read a book and we discuss some things. So, um, for today's, for, um, the book that we're going to be reading this season, I decided to do a read-along on Speak by Laurie Halse Anderson. Um, if you guys haven't read this yet, um, I would definitely recommend this, but if you guys have read this before, this is going to be really exciting. But for those of you who haven't read this book, it's such a really great book. Um, basically it's about this girl who went to this party. Her name was Melinda and she went to this party with her friends. And, um, basically during the party, something terrible has happened to her, and, um, she gets, and she called the police, and everybody just turns on her, and all of her friends just hate her, and they never spoke to her again. And ever since the party, she never spoke ever again. So it's a really hard, so it's... It's a, it's a really deep book, but it's a really good one. Um, so, some things that you might, that you guys might see in the book. Um, so there is, so you guys might see a lot of emotion. Um, because Melinda experiences some, like, depression and anxiety and just all these crazy emotions and that's going on in her world and um there's also and also you guys might see um some symbolism um so look out for that and then there's character development basically what that means is that through the book, the character, like, 
changes from a face where they're at, if that if that makes sense. Um, so, but like as we as you read this book, you will see a lot of character development because Melinda started her school her school year like negative. She was so negative. But then you read through the book and she grows and grows and grows. Um yeah. <laughs> um so let's talk about the characters. So the main character is Melinda. Um she is a freshman in high school and not a lot of people like and everybody just hates her because they just know who she is. Like, oh, you're that girl who called the police. Like, why would you do that? And then there's, um, uh, and then there's her art teacher. Um, shoot. What, what's his name? So there's Melinda. And then there's, um, hang on, let me look back up. Okay, so there is, um, Melinda, and then there's, um, Mr. Freeman, who, who is her art teacher, and he really inspired Melinda to express her feelings. <laughs> That's the puppy growling, you guys hear that? That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways, um, yeah, um, anyways, um, Mr. Freeman inspired Melinda to express her feelings through art, and, um, he, and, like, I, and, like, I, I definitely wish that I had an, a high school teacher who's like that. And then there's her parents, and then, um, there's a guy named David, who Melinda starts to be friends with, and he is also her lab partner, and, um, he... Um, I don't know how to explain about the character, but, um, he, um, he is very understanding to Melinda, and, um, he, yeah, <laughs> And he, and he just gives her advice, um, which is a really good friend. And then there's Heather, who, who seems like she is a good, who, who seems like a good friend, but once, so, M Melinda tries to make friends with Heather, right? But, um, but see, Heather is that kind of person who, um, who seems nice, but once you get, th once you get into the book, you'll, you'll start to see her true colors. And then there's, um, Rachel, who is her, who is her ex-best friend. She is very angry at Melinda for what happened at the party. Because she thought that she, that Melinda busted the party. Um, because she just wants to go home. But, um, 
she is really angry at Melinda and she never spoke to her again and she just started hanging out with these um with these uh with these exchange students from Europe so yeah um And then there's, uh, Vicky, who is another one of, uh, Melinda's, um, ex-best friends. Um, and she joined, and she is in the jocks. And then there's Ivy, who is kind of, like, in between, like, the thespians and, um... That other clan. I don't remember where she falls into. But Ivy is another one of Melinda's ex best friends. And um they and Ivy and Melinda kind of like make consensus with each other because they're in the same art class. Um and then there's um, hair woman who is, uh, Melinda's art, uh, Melinda's English teacher. Um, I don't know why she called her hair woman. Maybe because of the fact that, that she is really hairy. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but, um, yeah. And... Hair Woman is one of these characters who Melinda was like, Meh. But then there's Mr. Neck. Who, uh, who is really mean to Melinda. And when I read this book, I was really triggered by Mr. Neck. Because he kind of reminds me of the teachers that that I have in my high school. And those, and trust me, these teachers scare me a lot. <laughs> so I don't, yeah, I don't really like Mr. Neck. Um, and he's, uh, Melinda's social studies, social studies teacher. And he kind of scares me. <laughs> um, and then lastly, there is a guy, a boy named Andy, who is, who's a senior, and he is so popular, but, um, but he's also the guy that Melinda call, who Melinda calls him it, and, um, and you'll find out why she called him it as we get into this book, but I'm not gonna give everything away. We're just, I'm just gonna give a little short summary of these characters. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My puppy is like chewing on everything, <laughs> playing with everything. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna, so now, let's get reading, and we're gonna start reading the first part. Oh, yes, um, so, if you guys have the original copy of Speak, you would see, at, before the book begin, begins, there's this poem that Laurie Halls Anderson wrote based on the letters that she has be, been getting from the readers. And it's a really good poem, so I would read it before we get into this. But if you guys don't have, like, if you guys have this 20th anniversary edition, um, I would recommend, I would recommend after watching this video, watch her, watch Laurie read, read the poem. It's called... 
It's called Listen, and it's it's a really it's a it's a really deep poem. Like all these people who all these readers have gone through the same thing that Melinda has gone through. Um. So. Yes, and if you guys have the 20th anniversary edition, um, also I would read the, the foreword by Ashley C. Ford, and, um, after reading the book, I would read the afterword by Jason Reynolds, because these, the foreword and the Afterward, we're just so good, and um, it just reflects on the role men play um, to women, <laughs> and it also reflects on how this really happens to people. So, um, anyways, now that I've talked briefly about, um, speak, now I'm gonna read the first, I'm gonna read the beginning part of speak. It is my first morning of high school. I have seven new notebooks, a skirt I hate, and a stomach ache. The school bus wheezes, wheezes to my corner. The door opens and I step up. I am the first pickup of the day. The driver pulls away and never been a backseat waste case. If I sit in the middle, a stranger could sit next to me. If I sit in the front, it'll, it will make me look like a little kid. But I figure it's, be it's the best chance I have to make eye contact with one of my friends if any of them have decided to talk to me yet. The bus picks up students in groups of four or five. They walk down the aisle. People who were my middle school lab partners or gym buddies glare at me. I close my eyes. This is what I've been dreading. As we leave the, la the last stop, I am the only person sitting alone. The driver... <clears throat> the driver downshifts to drag us over the hills. The engine clanks, which makes the guys in the back holler something obscene. Someone is wearing too much cologne. I tried, uh, I tried open, to open my window, but the latches won't move. A guy behind me unwraps his breakfast and shoots the wrapper at the back of my head. It bounces into my lap. A ho ho. We pass janitors. Painting over the sign of the front of the high school. The, the, the school board decided that Meriwether High, home of the Trojans, didn't send a strong abstinence message. So we have, so they have transformed us into blue devils. Before the devil you know, then the Trojan you don't, I guess. School colors will stay purple and gray. The board didn't want to spring for new uniforms. <clears throat> Older students are allowed to roam until the until the bell, but ninth graders are herded into the auditorium. We fall into clans, jocks, country clubbers, idiot servants, cheerleaders, human waste, hero trash, future faces of America. Big hair, big hair ch chicks, big hair chicks, the Marthas, suffering artists, thes thespians, goths, shredders. I am clanless. I wasted last weeks of August watching bad cartoons. I didn't go to the mall, the lake, or the pool, or answer the phone. I have entered high school with the wrong hair, the wrong clothes, the wrong attitude. And I don't have anyone to sit with. I am outcast. There is no point in looking for my ex best friend for my ex friends. Our clan, the plain Janes, has splintered and the pieces are 
are being absorbed by rival factions. Nicole lounges with the jocks, comparing scars from summer league sports. Ivy floats between the suffering artists on one side of the aisle and the thespians on the other. She has enough personality to travel with two packs. Jessica has moved to Nevada. No real loss. She was mostly Ivy's friend anyway. The kids behind me laugh so loud I know they're laughing about me. I can't help myself. I turn around. It's Rachel, surrounded by a bunch of kids wearing clothes that definite that most definitely did not come from Eastside Mall. Rachel Bruin, my ex best friend. She glares at something above my left shoulder. Words climb up my throat. This was the girl who suffered through brownies with me, who taught me how to swim, who understood about my parents, who didn't make fun of my room. If there's anyone in the entire galaxy I'm dying to tell what ha really happened, it's Rachel. My throat burns. Her eyes meet mine for a second. I hate you. She mouths silently. She turns her head back to me and laughs fr with her friends. I bite my lip. I'm not going to think about it. It was ugly, but it's over. And I'm not going to think about it. My lips bleeds a, a little. It tastes like metal. I need to sit down. I stand in the center aisle of the auditorium, a wounded zebra in a National Geographic special looking for someone, anyone to sit next to. A predator approaches. Gray jock, buzz cut, whistle around the neck, thicker than his head. Probably a social studies teacher hired to coach a blood sport. Sit. I grab a seat. Another wounded zebra turns and smiles at me. She's packing at least five grand worth of orthodontia but has great shoes. I'm Heather from Ohio, she says. I'm here. I'm new here. Are you? I don't have time to answer. The lights dim and the indo in indoctrination begins. The first ten lies they tell you in high school. We are here to help you. You will have enough time to get to your classes before the bell rings. The dress code will be enfor enforced. No smoking is allowed on school grounds. Our football team will win the championship this year. We res we expect more of you here. Guidance counselors are always available to listen. Our schedule was created with your needs in, need in mind. Your your locker accommodation is is private. These will be the years you look back on fondly. My first class is biology. I can't find it and get my first demerit for wandering in the hall. It was 8.50 in the morning. Only 699 days and seven class periods till graduation. Okay, so what we're seeing here is that Melinda starts off her freshman year and she is very negative. But she... And she feels like an outcast and she has and she does she has no clan and all of her friends just were just spread abroad so and um but they won't talk to her and um yeah that's kind of that's a really hard thing when you're starting out high school and you don't have any friends like yeah I can definitely see what Melinda is going through um I want I want to know in the comments what um your first day of school was like like is it like, oh, like rainbows and butterflies, like, it's a great day, I made friends and da-da-da-da-da, or is it like Melinda's where, um, you just 
feel like an outcast? Um, just let me know in the comments below. Um, and also we will be discussing this. But, um, and I hope you guys follow, follow it along with this reading. And if, and if you guys don't have speak, um, you can borrow it from your mom and dad or your si or your older siblings or your friend or your neighbors or or um you can go to the bookstore and get speak and then come back to this video and follow along with it because again this series is a read along so if you guys want to read along with me um I would have a book on you but Anyways, I I hope this series um, uh, is great for you guys. Um, yeah, remember to stay happy, stay safe, and stay cool. And I'm off to the moon, and I will be back soon.